a rent eviction moratorium battle heats up. But the question is, can we crash at Mark Meadows' place? Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is LLA. Hope you're great and safe. Hope your day is full of a lot of color and purple. That, like my shirt, how it matches Nancy Pelosi's b a poster at her press conference. More about that in a second. Big developments about rent assistance and rent aid minutes ago. And in a week in which everything is going sort of screwy. We started with really great news yesterday. Great news this morning. And then by the middle of the day, we got some mixed messaging. Let me get right to the detail. The issue of rent eviction and rent moratorium has always been a a double whammy. It includes two parts in the second stimulus package. The first part is the eviction moratorium and the mortgage forbearance. Those don't give money. They actually prevent you from being evicted from your home. Your landlord cannot evict you. You're, you can't lose your home to, for, to foreclosure. Really great stuff. The other part of the package is the money itself, a grant program that would pay you rent if you needed that money. The week started off in a strange regard after we had great news from Steve Mnuchin, Treasury Secretary to Donald Trump, that said, hey, I have a lot of agreements with Nancy. We can get this deal done. We only have one big ticket item, a $1 trillion bailout of states. Very clear, very focused, very defined. He went line item about everything that's agreed upon, and rent was agreed upon. Rent eviction moratorium was agreed upon. In fact, I have been reporting for two weeks that was rent eviction moratorium agreements between the two parties. So what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Hence came the purple poster to match the house's shirt. Nancy rolled out a purple poster this afternoon, and on that purple poster was four items. It didn't include hazard pay, it didn't include your shack, it didn't include the state bailouts, it didn't include uh, Mark Meadows' address to go crash at his house, but it did include the following, rent grants. She had on the left of the poster an enormous amount of money that she said she proposed for a rent grant program, and she had on the right side of the poster a nice flat zero. She said that Steve Mnuchin didn't offer anything. Now, what's very strange about this, is this a correct representation or an incorrect representation? Is this a correct representation of where they were three weeks ago or where they were last Friday, it's really not particularly clear. Because on Monday, Steve Mnuchin said there was an agreement for several things. Today, Nancy Pelosi wanted to portray everything as not agreed upon. It was a strange day because it started with Nancy Pelosi saying we have to reach an agreement in the month of August. We can't wait to September. We have to do the deal now. And in fact, she evoked the most clear emotional sentence she could use. We can't wait to September because people will be dead. Dead, that was her word. So uh, we, had the, we, had the, uh, we, had the, we had the imagery in the morning. By middle of the day, she said, no, you know, um, we're just not going to do it unless they come up with more money. Nancy, you just told us people are going to be dead. So now it's okay for them to be dead? It's that sort of mixed messaging that's sort of driving everyone crazy. Um, and it's not just the Democrats. The Republicans were doing their own version of mixed messaging earlier today when Larry Kudlow appeared on CNBC, his prior home, and said, you know what? The reason why the deal is not being done is because Nancy wants a voter's right provision in the bill. Voter's right provision? Wait a second, we were told there was a stale, that there was a bailout for states, which we do see, that was why the deal's not being done. What's this voter rights provision? Ironically, there is no voter right provision in the bill. So now suddenly we have Nancy saying she hasn't had a deal with them because of something about rent that they said they had an agreement all on. And then we have Larry Kudlow saying he's not even coming to the table because of a provision that doesn't even exist. Everyone's just wanting to give them the crayons and say, here, just write it up. There's something wrong with you folks.
The weekend started very strange as well. Last Saturday, the president issued an executive order saying he's going to take care of them himself. He's going to issue an executive order to ensure that you stay in your home. He had held a press conference the day before on Friday from his golf club, golf, uh, golf country club, and said he's going to issue an eviction moratorium to ensure you're not evicted from your home. Wonderful, wonderful, great news. And then came the eviction moratorium on, on, on Saturday, as it was titled, the executive order. You read it, and there's no executive order for eviction moratorium. In fact, there's nothing. The executive order that was issued by the president on Saturday didn't call for an eviction moratorium. All it called for was to call f <laughs> two people if you have problems. What are we, like call ET? Call phone home? Phone home, you have a problem with ev eviction moratorium, call ET? Well, he gave us the alternative ET, Ben Carson. You're supposed to call Ben Carson, head of HUD, if you have a problem with your making your rent, if you have a problem with making your mortgage, but it didn't call for an eviction moratorium. So for 48 hours, millions of Americans, tens of millions, nearly 40 million people who are facing eviction moratorium at this moment, half of all renters who are Hispanic, half of all renters who are African-American facing eviction, were told they were going to get protection on Saturday. They got nothing. Now, ultimately, we drop in the comments, oh, you're just, you're saying bad things about our president. No, I'm describing the bill. I'm trying the exec uh, describing the executive order. The executive order didn't call for anything. And by Monday, the president understood that because analysts, whether they were Republicans or Democrats, whether you were senators, whether you were Republicans or Democrats, all came out and said, what was that thing on Saturday? That was not an executive order to protect for eviction moratorium. So Nancy Pelosi this afternoon said, hey, I asked for all this grant money, which is different than eviction moratorium, and they didn't offer me anything. Well, that's not what Steve Mnuchin said on Monday as well. What's going on here? The second stimulus package proposed by the Democrats has two provisions, an eviction moratorium and mortgage forbearance, and then a rent-grant program. The rent-grant program would allow you to get free money. Free money. Money that you need right now. Money by applying to a big grant program that would pay the money to your landlord if you can't make rent. It's so needed, it's required, it's wonderful, great news. It would also do the same thing for utilities. Also incredible, also really great. Basically, this fund would ensure that, one, you're not thrown out of your home, and two, that the money is paid for. Now, what's ironic about the situation is that Steve Mnuchin, Steve Mnuchin, who comes from a financial background, initially didn't understand the logic of a grant program. It's strange why he would not understand the, understand, understand the, uh, the logic of a grant program. The president additionally has had trouble understanding this as well. Let me explain it to you. If you have an eviction moratorium that doesn't require you to pay rent right now, the landlord can evict you. But what happens to that rent you have to pay? It piles up. Every month it keeps on piling up. You don't pay the month of October. You don't pay the month of November and December. All these months start to pile up until we're at the end of the order, which could be, let's say, February of next year. The eviction moratorium is lifted. And then what happens? A real estate market collapse. A real estate market collapse. All those people who have not paid rent now have no aid to pay them the rent. The rent is now due months and months and months of rent during the pandemic. They can't pay it. They get evicted. And here comes the snowball. The snowball is they're evicted. The landlord doesn't get the rent. The landlord doesn't have money to pay their bills. The landlord loses their property to foreclosure. The bank pick, pick, banks pick up foreclosed property. The banks don't want foreclosures. They want their mortgages paid. Suddenly the banks default. Happy Saturday morning in February. Oh no, that is not good news. That's not good news. Now, Republicans have told Steve Mnuchin this, have told the White House this, but yet there's no movement. Marco Rubio last Friday said, hey, you absolutely need a rent grant program. You need relief to real estate. Real estate can't collapse. Mitt Romney has been very critical about the situation as well. So as Nancy Pelosi sat there with that purple poster and pointing at things like, you know, it's the price is right behind curtain number one. It's the, it's the final showcase showdown. How much do you want for rent? There was that inherent question that everyone was thinking about. Well, wait a second. This is not what Steve said on Monday. And that's where we sit today. 
It has been a very peculiar day in which we started with great news this morning. We had great news yesterday. We had great news the day before. And now Nancy seems to just want to say to us, no, it's all untrue. Well, who's telling the truth? Steve Mnuchin said, called Nancy Pelosi yesterday, said, we need to make a deal. Let's make a deal. The day started with Mitch McConnell saying publicly there has to be a deal done. The deal needs to be done now. I'm urging the deal to be done right away. Great news. Stock market opened on that great news. CNBC, the Financial News Network, led that as their lead story. Mark Wall Street excited. Pandemic COVID-19 relief bill deal seems imminent. That was yesterday morning. It all continued along as Mitt Romney says it has to be a deal. Marco Rubio says it had to be a deal. Everyone said it had to be a deal. Even the White House said there had to be a deal. Uh, Pete Navarro, Trade Secretary to Donald Trump, said it has to be a deal. Meet in the middle, make a deal. Chuck Schumer, who's been in the negotiation room, said it has to be a deal. Everyone says it has to be a deal except two people. Nancy Pelosi and Mark, Mark Meadows, who seems to be just nowhere. And then... Late yesterday and early this morning, Nancy Pelosi said, we have to do a deal, otherwise people are dead. Okay, that's the best way to describe a deal negotiation. We're going to do a deal, otherwise you'll be dead. Okay, that I think that means is she's going to negotiate. <laughs> I mean, she just said she doesn't want people dead. Well, then the afternoon she said, oh, you know, maybe we was, won't meet unless they come up with more money. Mnuchin's package is too small. Literally was what she said the day to start the day. Steve Mnuchin's package is too small. That's how she started the day with. By the middle of the day, she made it actually worse. She said, Steve Mnuchin's package is actually smaller than he's representing to people. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is like a bad Melrose Place episode. This is like, you know, 90210 in reverse. Belly Hills 90210 in reverse. Where, you know, Brian Austin Green tries to flirt with toy spelling. And it's just like, oh, don't try that. It's not going to work. It's literally become that. So as we sit here today, we have multiple problems in analyzing the situation. One, we're being told mixed messages on a daily basis by the same people. <laughs> they start the day with one message. By the end of the day, they're saying something else. Mitch, Mitch McConnell is guilty of that as well. Minutes ago, Mitch McConnell said, Nancy Pelosi is like throwing spaghetti at the wall and trying to see it stick. Mitch just yesterday said it, he have to do a deal, and, and, and he's urging Steve to get in the room and deal deal with Nancy. Today, he's slamming the same deal. Are, are these people like, you know, schizo? <laughs> I mean, I've, I've seen multiple personalities before, but not in Congress. I mean, maybe they exist. Then we don't have we have conflicting reports. Steve Mnuchin saying one thing, Nancy Pelosi saying another thing. And here's the ultimate biggest issue that we have. These people are not being transparent with you, the American public. When a second stimulus package was introduced by the Republicans by Mitch McConnell two weeks ago called the Heals Act, it was missing a lot of things. So the White House came out and said, we want to do other things. Okay, put in writing. They didn't put in writing. Then Steve and Nancy started to meet every day for two hours. Yeah, all of two hours. I mean, <laughs> uh, they can't perform longer than that. All of two hours. Uh, and then at the end of the two hours, guess what they did? They would never tell you really with specifics what happened. They would take... They would talk in generalities, and I would have to put it together and interpret their words and explain to you what they meant. But they never said, Steve offered $500 million for rent. I, offered, I asked for $1 billion for rent. We're very far apart. They would never do that. And so days went on, and they continued to not do that. And so finally last Friday, Nancy Pelosi issued a statement to members of the House and Senate saying, this is where we're at but it was very brief. It was all three sentences, and it didn't do all the 20 deal points or so of the of second stimulus package. It didn't even mention the check. It didn't even mention the state bailouts. And Steve Benuchin didn't do anything at all. And then there's Larry Kudlow, who's, you know, describing something entirely different. As we sit here today, we really are not understanding the situation because people are not giving us a clear message. It makes the reporter's job even more difficult because ultimately I'm relying upon what Steve Mnuchin's saying. And if it's untrue, then it's untrue and we don't know it's untrue. And if I'm relying upon what Nancy Pelosi says or Mitch McConnell and it's verified by someone else and then negated by a third person, then what are we doing here? It's becoming very, 
very extenuated. Uh, for that reason, go to the front of this channel. There's a subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button, and there's a little alert next to it. Please hit it, because this situation is changing by the minute. I am on top of the facts, and it's very incorrect to sit back and say the following untrue statements, that they're not meaning to September, there's no deal, there's never going to be a deal, they're going to wait till October, they're going to wait till after election, they're going to wait till January, they're going to vote in the December. None of those things have been said. On the other hand, they have said things and they haven't held up them as well. Steve said there's going to be a deal last week, he didn't, he didn't hold to that. Steve said there's going to be a deal the week before, he didn't hold to that. The president said he's going to give you, multi, give you a generous check over $1,200, he didn't hold to that. I get that. But at least we keep track of what they're saying and we don't sit back and just be negative. You can't be negative in a situation like this. I don't want it to frustrate you. And what I want you to understand is that there's a lot more money out there that is available for you right now that you can possibly get if you qualify, if you're an independent contractor who is impacted by COVID-19, if you're a solo practitioner who's impacted by COVID-19, if you're laid off as an, as an employee because of COVID-19. There's a lot of other money out there. And that's why this channel is covering all those instruments, covering all those monies. And I don't want you to sit back and just wait for one thing because that one thing could get held up because of a purple poster. Uh, so hit that subscribe and like button. Stay with me. Coming up e this evening is Evening's LA Light. As always, stay informed, stay motivated, stay inspired, and stay in LA for more.